Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. Welcome to another 360 tutorial. In this video, I want to take a look at the Views widget, which comes with dynamic content for Elementor. Dynamic content is an add-on for Elementor that has lots of unique widgets and extensions. I've been using it since December 2019, and I'm still finding new things. Recently, I came across the Views widget. It's listed here under Listing, and here's Views. I took a look at it and realized that it was another gem, so I spent some time figuring out how it worked, and I wanted to share that with you. I have here a test site using the free Astra theme, and I've generated a bunch of demo posts here, and you can see that they have different categories. And I have Elementor and Dynamic Content for Elementor installed. So I'm going to create a new page. And I'll call this uh, Views Test. Disable the title and publish it. And now open it with Elementor. And I'll give this a little spacing. The Views widget is found in with the dynamic content for Elementor. There is a group for listing. Here it is. And here's the Views widget. So I'm just adding it to a one column section. If you wanted your listing to be smaller, you could constrain it by putting it into a smaller column. Before diving in, let's take a look at the workflow. So the workflow goes like this. First, you pick your content type, either posts, which can include post pages or custom post types, users, or categories, tags, and custom taxonomies. So first, you pick your content type. Then you select the content itself. And you have the choice of fields, HTML, and tokens, or using a pre-created template. And then you choose the format for that content. It can be a grid, a table, a list, or slideshow. And finally, you have the option to set filters, sorting, and pagination. So let's see what that looks like here. Here, you select the object type, the content object, posts, users, or terms. And then here are fields, text, which is the HTML and content placeholder tags, or template. So let's look at fields. And you can see it started out, it gave us the post titles here. You can add a label if you want. You can choose your HTML tag for it. I think I'll take the label off. You can have it link to the object, in this case the post. And you can add custom classes around it. So let's add another field and let's do post author, then let's add another one, and let's see if we can get the excerpt, T-E-R, post excerpt. If we want to put some space here between the records, then we go to style, single result, let's see if we could put some margin there, yeah, like that. Anyway, that's the idea. So this is showing in a 100% one column grid. Let's see what happens if we make it a 50% grid. Goes like that and then we could go back and add some padding there. Let's see. Okay, so you get the idea and that's grid, this is table, and list. And you have an unordered list or an ordered list option. And there's a slideshow option, I haven't tried that. Then let's go back here and try, instead of fields, let's try the text option. And so this gives you a, a little edit window here, and you can see that it has some placeholder tags, content tags like post thumb, 
post title, post excerpt, and that's wrapped in HTML. And let's try showing that as a table or a grid. On the post that accompanies this video, I have an example. I put together some a snippet of some HTML. And so let's add that here instead. Let's see what that looks like. And let's go back to 100%. And let's change that to a list. And then I also have here a little bit of custom CSS. So I'm going to grab that snippet. And with Elementor, you add that down in here for the widget. And let's go back, make that a regular list. There we go. As you can see, you have a lot of flexibility here, but you'll have to bring your own HTML and CSS for that. And the final option here is the template option. So here you use a pre-created template and you select it. So I'm going to save our place here and then we'll go and create a template. Our lovely full screen default for WordPress. Templates add new. This is going to be a section and we'll say a loop item. Don't need one of those. I'm going to just, I'm going to grab a single column row, make that content full width, but not stretch the section. And then I'm going to add an intersection and I'll make this side about, I don't know, let's say 30% maybe. You know, you can use the Elementor widgets, but I'm going to use the dynamic content for Elementor widgets that they have for creating templates. And so I'm going to put the featured image here. You don't get anything. Let's go to the settings preview and let's do a single post and let's pick one. I'm not sure what the titles are, so we'll just pick one there and apply. And now I'm going to add on the other side the title. Then I'm going to add excerpt. Okay, there we go. We do advanced manipulation. I think we get to pick how many words we have. And I don't want that ellipsis. Okay. Next, I'm going to add a read more button. And then for our post meta, Dynamic Content for Elementor has a widget that is text plus dynamic tags or text editor with tokens. So I'll put that in there. So I looked up on the Dynamic Content for Elementor's documentation and at the tokens. And so I am um, put some post meta together there. I guess we can move that up some. Maybe give it a negative margin at the top. And then for our read more, give it a border style solid, a width of one, and a border radius of four. I guess I better change the text color of this here. And save that. Now let's go back to our page and we'll and we'll apply that template. And there it is. Oh, it's taking, I wonder what's, we don't see the featured images here. And there we go. Okay. Huh. Oh. When I generated the test posts, I think I, I made 120. <laughs> so that's taking a while to load in the editor. We'll come back to these in a minute. So I'm going to change this to just show 10 posts and let's see. Okay, so that'll help things to load quicker here and we'll come back to that. So that's a template and you can see that you can create whatever kind of single uh, loop item you want and you can use dynamic tags. So let's look at the other panels. Here's a count. You want to display the count. Put it at the top if you wanted that. 
Here's the from, and here's where you can pick your custom post type. I could do books or something else. Dynamic, this is if you wanted to create a generic listing that you used for archives, you could turn on dynamic and then it would pull the correct content type depending on what the archive was for. You have your, you know, post status and you can filter here on taxonomy, categories, tags, post formats. I have a custom taxonomy called genres, but I don't want to pull select ones. Then you can apply a filter here if you wanted to say filter by date or something like that. And this, the where exposed form is kind of interesting because here you can add a front end filter. So we have different category terms. So let's add one for categories. Let's see. So let's do categories. You see that's full width there and it's picked up the three categories. We can go to style and make that not span the whole area there. And then our form title we can say um, pick your category. And let's see, let's go back here. We can use Ajax to apply the filter automatically without having to refresh the page. And we can have the filter applied automatically when the option in the drop down changes. And since we're using Ajax, we don't need the button, the search button. You can change the form width if you wanted to. And here again, you can add some custom classes if you want to have more control over the styling. Then here's a group by option. If, for example, you wanted to, you know, see I have different authors. If you wanted to have the results grouped by author or title or something else. And then here's an order by option. So we will have it order by date, by post date. That looks like it's oldest first. So let's make it go the other way. All right. Back now to paging, we're going to want to turn pagination on if we want to limit the number that shows per page. Oh, I think this should be a zero because we don't want to skip the first. Now that we have paging on, we're not going to limit the number of total results. And let's see, we'll turn Ajax paging on. So we've gone through everything here. The only other thing are the no results behavior. If you look at the styling options here, you'll notice there's styling for the overall results container. There's styling for the single result, that's the individual loop item. There's styling for the exposed form. And so that's this up here. For the sort, if you exposed a sort, we didn't expose one styling for the pagination, which is what we need. That's kind of a little hard here. So let's go to typography, make the numbers a little bit bigger, and let's add some spacing between them. And maybe a bit of padding. So that looks pretty good. And let's save this and now go view our final result. And here's the finished page. Here are the category filter. Let's try that. And here's the pagination. Good. So that's done. In conclusion, one challenge I continue to face when working with dynamic content for Elementor was figuring out which dynamic tags or placeholders to use. I noticed that the documentation has improved and they've added a lot more examples. So this is nice and this is what I used for putting together the post meta and things like that that I showed in the video. When looking at some possible use cases for the views widget, the fields option, which is where you pick individual fields, seemed like it would be a good choice when creating lists from multiple posts or custom post types. Normally in Elementor, it's not so easy to create a list that's pulling from multiple posts. 
and the views widget solves that problem. The text option, the HTML and CSS, is an opportunity where you can pick and display the content the way you want, you're in charge, but you need to know some HTML and CSS to make it work. The editor box where you enter the HTML and the placeholder tags is kind of small. So I think that might be impractical for more complex designs. It's not a real code editor. The template option is very powerful. You can create simple archive lists like I did, or even something more complex. Since what you're doing is creating a simple loop item, you have a lot of options. You can pull in information that normally wouldn't be available in your regular Elementor archive widgets. For example, in a real estate listing, you could have a box in the template showing the number of square feet and number of bedrooms. This would be pretty easy to add using the Views widget, but difficult normally. Overall, I found the Views widget to be another powerful feature of the dynamic content for Elementor add-on. I have a text version of this video on the Elementor 360 website, along with other walkthroughs and tutorials and resources. That's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you for watching.